Welcome to this SiteOx instructional video on how to extend your lease time on a cloud hosted server using your Apple iOS or Android mobile device. This video assumes that you already have a user account at SiteOx and that you have an active server leased at SiteOx. If you do not have a user account at SiteOx, you may want to view the instructional video titled How to Create a New User Account at SiteOx from Your Mobile Device. This video is available from the SiteOx Knowledge Base under the category of Instructional Videos. You can get to the SiteOx Knowledge Base from the sidebar menu button. Please note that during this video I'll be using a mouse pointer to indicate which buttons to press on your mobile device and when to press them. The first step will be to download and install the SiteOx app from either, either the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store depending upon what type of mobile device you have. In the App Store search for SiteOx that's S-I-T-E space O-X. Once you've found the SiteOx app download and install the app and then open it and you will see a screen that looks similar to this. You'll see several buttons that allow you to order new services, manage services, manage your account, or contact us. In the upper right hand corner of the screen you'll see a button labeled account. Press this button to display a pull down menu and in this menu press login. The login screen will be displayed where you will enter your email address and password associated with your SiteOx user account. For the purpose of this, de of this demo, I have a demo user account set up and I will enter that information here. So I'll enter video at SiteOx.com and the password associated with that. You'll of course enter your own email address and password and then press login. The account home screen will be displayed where you can view several types of information including the number of active services you have, any invoices that are due, and the number of open tickets you have. To extend your lease time on a server that you currently have leased at SiteOx, press the sidebar menu button and press services. From here then press My Services and this will display a screen showing your products and services that you have leased at SiteOx. This demo user account will only have one service, an AIX LPAR. This LPAR is shown to be in an active state, meaning that it is currently running within an active lease period. Make a note that only active server leases may be extended. If a server is suspended, the lease would have to be renewed and that procedure is covered in a different instructional video. But since this AIX LPAR is in an active state, we can extend the lease time associated with that LPAR. So let's see how to do that. There is a function to extend your lease, your server lease contained within the detail page associated with each server. So click on the View Details button of the AIX LPAR to access that function. This screen will show you the details associated with this active leased server. You can see the configuration parameters associated with this lease. You can see the time of the lease. You can see the operating system, the number of processors, the amount amount of memory and the amount of storage that was leased. If you scroll down in this page you will also see an expire date and a terminate date. The expire date is the date and time of when the lease will expire on this LPAR. At this date and time the LPAR will be suspended but not removed. Everything on the LPAR will still exist but it will be inaccessible after this date and time. The terminate date is the date and time when the LPAR will be deleted and removed. The LPAR will not be recoverable after this date and time. The mobile user interface will allow you to add time to the LPAR lease period by extending the lease. You may perform the extend function up to and until the date and time 
indicated in the expire date field for the purpose of verifying that we successfully extended the server lease in this video we will make a note of the current expired date and time and the terminate date and time so the current expired date is February 4th 2015 and the current terminate date is a date one day later of February 5th 2015 the time between the expire date and the terminate date is called the grace period and it is during this grace period that the server lease can be renewed but again the renew function is in a different video so we'll not cover that here this is the extend video when we add time to the server lease the expire and terminate dates will change according to how much time we add If you scroll down on the screen, you will see the extend server lease function. This function will allow you to add more time to your existing server lease. You can choose the amount of time you want to add using the pull down menu and selecting the option you want. You can add time to your server lease by indicating the number of days, weeks, or up to a month. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to choose four days to add to the existing server lease. This means that four days will be added to the expire date and the grace period. Note that adding time to the grace period also changes the terminate date, and we will see how that is affected once the extend function is completed. Note that also that the maximum grace period on any server lease is seven days regardless of how long the server was leased. This means that the maximum time span or grace period between the expire and terminate dates will be seven days again regardless of how long the server was leased. The grace period is the amount of time that you have from when a server lease is suspended until the server lease is terminated and removed. The grace period changes depending upon how long you lease the server so the longer you lease a server the greater the grace period you have up to a maximum of seven days so we have chosen four days for the amount of time that we want to extend our server lease and we will press the extend server lease button this will display the order summary screen where it will show your new order and the options you selected. You can verify that your order is correct and edit or remove the item if needed. From this screen you can continue shopping by pressing this button. This will allow you to add additional products and services to your shopping cart before you check out. For the purpose of this video I will press the checkout button to continue with the order for this one single extend item in the shopping cart. This will display the checkout screen where you can finalize your order. This screen will show you the items that you are ordering, the details of the user associated with the person placing the order, and the payment method associated with that user account. If there's more than one payment method associated with the user account, uh, they would show up here and you could pick which payment method you wanted to use. You can also enter any additional notes or instructions that you want to add to this order. Then you'll need to press the checkbox associated with the statement that says you have read and agree to the instructions uh, to the terms of service at Cydox. After that you can press the complete order button to finalize your order and begin the build out process for your new extend function associated with your LPAR. This will display the order confirmation screen. Your order number is displayed on the screen. From this screen, 
you can view the extend service you just ordered by pressing the my services button or you can press the sidebar menu button select services and press my services this will display a screen showing your products and services that you currently have ordered at Sidox. we see now that there are two services listed your original AIX LPAR in an active state and a new AIX LPAR in a pending state. The new AIX LPAR that is in a pending state is the time extension we just ordered. It is in a pending state while it is being processed. It will take a couple of minutes for the system to process this server lease extension order so I will pause the video while that takes place. I'm resuming the video now. In the processing of the server lease extension request, uh, the, it has been completed at this point. However, we still th see this screen showing two AIX LPARs, one active and one pending. So I'll refresh this screen to update the status by going to the sidebar menu button selecting services and my services and this will refresh the screen and now we see we have one LPAR one AIX LPAR and it is currently in the active state so now how do we verify the server lease time was actually extended on this server a couple of ways during the processing of the extend request you would have been sent a notification to your email address to inform you that a server lease extension was performed so you can go check your email to see that email and also a support ticket was created containing this notification that was emailed to you so you can check your support tickets on Sidox to verify the extension request Another, another way to verify the extension was performed is to view the details associated with this AIX LPAR. So we can look at the expire and terminate dates associated with that. I will press the view details button to bring up the screen that contains those expire and terminate dates this will display the screen containing the details of the extended server lease. From the details you can see the host name and you can see that the lease time is now changed to four days. Previously it was one day. This reflects the last requested lease time not the total amount of time. So this is showing the amount of time we requested in our lease extension which was four days. To see the total amount of time we will need to look at the new expire and terminate dates. So if we scroll down in this screen we'll see the new expire and terminate dates. Again the expire date is the date and time of when the lease will expire and the server will be suspended. We see the new expire date is the previous expire date plus four more days. And now let's look at the terminate date. The terminate date is now five days beyond the expire date. And that's because the server was originally leased for one day when it was and then it was extended for four additional days. So the grace period, the time between the expire and terminate dates, was originally one day, is now five days. This is because we added four days to the server lease. It also added four days to the grace period. So the new grace period is now five days. This means the terminate date is now five days after the expire date. Please note again the maximum grace period is seven days regardless of how much time is added to the server lease. This means the maximum amount of time that will ever exist between the expire and terminate dates is seven days regardless of how much time a server is leased. So now getting back to the reason we're viewing this information we can see here 
in the details of the server lease, the time was extended by an additional four days. And that is it on how to extend your lease time on a cloud-hosted server using your mobile device. If you would like additional information on the various products and services provided by Sidox, please go to Sidox.com and you can look in the knowledge base. In the knowledge base there are lots of instructional videos out there that describe how to perform all of the features and functions associated with automated deployment of systems into the cloud. There is also a list of services provided by Sidox in the knowledge base and there are lots of how-to articles out there as well. This is the end of this video. Thank you for listening and watching.